In this video, we are going to talk about how we can calculate the pH when we mix a strong acid with a strong base. And this, of course, will give something like that. But before we jump into the actual information, it's good to know where we are and how much we have learned so far. Notice that so far we have studied the pH of one single species in solution. For example, if it's an acid, you will have the conjugate base with the hydronium. Notice that sometimes this is an equilibrium characterized by the Ka and you may need to solve the ice table or sometimes it's just a strong acid in which the initial concentrations have been converted into products. In any case, the concentration of hydronium will give us the pH. The pH according to this, um, this formula. If we had a base, we have learned also how to calculate the concentrations in solution such that you need to calculate the pOH, so the, first you need to calculate the concentration of hydroxide and through the pOH and then knowing that pOH and pH at a 14, you can also calculate the pH of a, of a solution of a base. But notice that so far we have considered a single species, either an acid or a base, and we know how to solve that. What we're going to learn in this video is how to calculate the pH when an acid and a base are the two of them in the solution. Okay, And so the experimental experimental setup that is commonly used is an Arlemeyer flask, you will learn how to spell that word in the lab, and a burette. A burette is good to progressively add small amounts of, in this case, a base. We are dealing with this kind of problem. What is the pH of a 0, 1 molar solution of HCl? So down here you have a 0, 1 molar solution, you have 10 milliliters of 0, 1 molar solution HCl and you slowly add, you keep adding a 0, 1 molar solution of NaOH. So first you add 2 milliliters and then 4 and then so you keep reading this is an I, okay, so you keep reading how much you have been adding, okay. Um, so that's what we're going to study. We're going to study what is the pH of a solution when you add 0, when you add 5, when you add 10, when you add 20, okay, because this will be reacting. And because both sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid are strong species, sodium hydroxide is a strong base, hydrochloric acid is a strong acid, uh, they will completely react in a way that what you actually have in solution is directly hydroxide and hydronium ion. So you could you could draw, you could write the solution taking place down here when you add base. You could you could write it like that. But more commonly, you can may as well just consider the hydronium and hydroxide reacting and give water. The pH will be given by the concentration of either hydronium or hydroxide. Okay, so let's do that. Let's calculate the pH at different stages. For example, if initially we have no, if we have added no sodium hydroxide in the uh, in the Erlenmeyer, that means that we only have the hydrochloric acid. What is the uh, the concentration of hydrochloric acid? The concentration of hydrochloric acid is 0, 1. Therefore, initially, the pH is 1. Okay, so in this case, the pH is 1. We don't even need to build any ice table because we have not added any OH negative. Okay, so the pH is 1 before we have added any hydroxide. Now, if we have added 5 milliliters of sodium hydroxide, now we need to start making doing some numbers. Let's write moles in the ice table. How many moles do I have? So initially, so let's let's draw a represent here's my Arlen Meyer and I have ten milliliters of HCl01 and here's my barrette with some imagination. Okay. And this is a zero one molar sodium hydroxide. So now I have added five milliliters, okay? Five milliliters of sodium hydroxide. Well how many moles of 
HCL do I have down here? And instead of HCL, I'm just going to calculate H3O+. Plus. So I had 10 milliliters, 0, 1 molar. And so that means that in 1,000 milliliters, there's 0, 1 moles of H3O+. Plus. If you put that, hopefully, I'm not mistaken, is 10 to the negative 3, 0 0.001. So I have point initially I have 0 0.001. How many milliliters, how, sorry, how many moles of hydroxide? I have added 5 milliliters, so 5 milliliters of sodium hydroxide. I'm just writing hydroxide because it's a strong base. 0, 1 molar. So there is 0, 1 mole, so you will see that this 0, 0, 0, 5, this was moles of hydronium, this is moles of hydroxide. So I have 0 0.0005. Notice that I have twice as much hydronium than hydroxide. This reaction reacts one to one, so my limiting reagent is this one. The hydroxide is all gone. What do I have left? So 0 0.001 minus this one is 0 0.005. Okay? And for water, this should be twice as much as had, has been the limiting reagent which is 0 0.005. Notice that it's an aqueous solution, so we do not really care about calculating the amount of water. What matters here is how much is left of hydronium, because that will determine the pH. So the concentration of hydronium is moles over liters. How many moles do I have? I have 0 0.005 left, because the, re the other half has reacted with the hydroxide that I added. And the volume. The volume is, I had initially 10 milliliters and I have had 5 milliliters more. That's, point, that's 15 milliliters, or if you will, 0 point, point 0 0.015 liters. Now, if we divide this, and I'm going to go to a calculator here next to me, and hopefully it will not be very different from the initial pH. See, this has not changed that much. So it's 0 0.033 molar. That, that M is not an M. Therefore, the pH, I do the negative log of that, and when you put it in there, is 1.5. So by adding NaOH, 5 milliliters of NaOH, we move from pH 1 to pH 1.5. Okay, let's keep going. Now we are going to add, so we were at 5 milliliters, we add 5 milliliters more so that the total is 10 milliliters. So initially I had 0 0.001 of hydrox, hydronium and I have added now 10 milliliters. So if you do the calculations you will see that I have added 0 0.001 moles of hydroxide. Notice that I'm adding stoichiometric amounts, therefore nothing is left. I only produce water, so this should be 0 0.0. I created just um, these many moles of water, that, does, that doesn't change the pH. This is neutral water. Notice that there's nothing left of acid and base. Neutral water has pH equal to 7. A big jump. A big jump of pH, right? Because we went, for the first 5 milliliters, it went from 1 to 1.5. And the second chunk of 5 milliliters, from 5 to 10, it went from 1.5 to 7. What happens now if I add just 2 milliliters more? That is a total of 12. Well, the initial amount of hydronium has not changed, but, and now you may see the trend here, the amount of moles of hydroxide that I have is 0.12. Now notice that the limiting reagent is the hydronium. How much is left now? Well, the initial minus how much it has been consumed, this will be 0 0.002. Okay? Um, I do not care too much about the water, but if you are interested, not that that's going to change the pH, because the pH will be determined by the initial species left, so that should be 0 0.0001. Okay. Now, uh, what is the pH? Well, notice in this case we have no hydronium left. The pH will be determined by the amount of hydroxide left, because that's what I have left. How much is that? Well, this is 0 0.0002 divided by the total amount of volume that I have. I initially had 10 milliliters and I have added 12 more. That's 22, or if you will, 
0 0.022 liters. Notice that I go very fast with these kind of steps. It's important that you can convert in your head liters and milliliters. Okay, how much is that? Let's go check in my calculator that I have here. 0 0.0002 divided by 0 0.022 and that's about 9 times 10 to the negative 3 molar. If you do the negative log of that, that will be very close to I hope, 0 0.001, 2.05. So the POH, which is the negative log of 9 point times 10 to the negative 3, this is around 2.05. That is, the pH is 14 minus 2.05, or if you will, that should be 11.95. Another big jump, okay? So let's see what we, how we can represent in a typical titration curve. We went from 1 to 1 1.5, 7, and 11.95, or if you will, uh, it's around 12, okay? So what you will see is a curve in which the pH is represented on the y-axis and the volume of sodium hydroxide is represented down here. Initially, at zero, the pH was one. Then we added five milliliters, then we added 10, and then we added 12. At five, the barely changed. It was 1.3, remember? Okay. So, and then at 10, it went, let's make it at scale. This is seven. I'm gonna put this at 12. So at 12, when I added 10 milliliters, it went to 7, and then when I added 12 milliliters, it went up here. Okay, so this is something like that. We don't have enough data to see it, but typically this is the, titra the, the titration curve that you will see. In the next video, we will explore more the shapes of the different kinds of titration curves that we will see. But at least here, we calculated how, we learned how to calculate each point of this curve.